Speaking of dark themes, Requiem for a Dream spent quite a lot of its time dancing around the inevitably dark conclusions it had. While the audience knew from the get-go that things were going to become a living hell for all characters involved, no one in the story seemed aware of the path that they were going down until it was far too late. This felt, in a weird way, like a plausible modern-day version of an anthology program from the 60s, famous for making people think outside the box, especially for that era. It's kind of fascinating and fitting that this came out in the 1960s then, because people were still locked in Submitted that for your mindset. approval, one you other socio, an internet critic taking a step away from his usual formula to make a better show. What he does not realize is that this step is the first of many that will take him to a very close encounter with the Twilight Zone. New stuff, just watch the original run. I'm the other socio, and I don't have a sign-off. Unbelievable! That made no sense! Well, what's wrong, Kelvin? The silo didn't send you no paper now, did he? Oh, no, 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 no. That, that bad. Well, it was almost that bad. Damn. What was it? This Twilight Zone review did the so stunt. Yes. I totally know what that is. Everybody knows what that is. This series carved itself into history for a reason, yo. It opened up what TV did. It was like the South Park of its day. What with all the social commentary and the weird things happening to the main characters. Wait, did someone die in each episode, Dan? Pretty much. Damn, it really was South Park. And that's what's confusing me here. He never mentioned that. What did he mention then? And he totally spoiled the ending. That's all people do when they talk about the Twilight Zone, though. In five seconds, they're all like, Lou, look at this weird plot line and this crazy twisty end. Uh, totally misses the entire point of the show. What was the point? It wanted to get people to relate to the main character and, like, worry about what's happening to him, what's going on, you know? Empathize! I, I don't know. How could the Soch completely miss the entire point of the show? It's like, it's like what he does, you know? This bars further investigation. Bacchus, hold on to the fort. But I don't have big enough arms! Look! No, 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 use the rope. Oh, yeah! On it! You. Nothing too much. I do have an itch in my throat, though. Nah, man! Your Twilight Zone review! Yes, what about it? It sucked! I'm always happy to hear feedback. In what way did it suck? You covered all four episodes in one go, and what did I take away from it? Interest in watching them? A wiki plot summary. In a time where any old person can jump on the net and get information on entertainment, it's just pointless to restate the plot and review. You were basically a let me Google that for you in a video form. How would you talk about a story without revealing some of its plot elements? With subtlety! Kelvin, subtlety doesn't work in this medium. The kind of pace used in The Twilight Zone wouldn't work in today's entertainment. It assumes that the audience needs everything spelled out, lingering in the moments far too long, and taking a very drawn-out time to put across a relatively obvious point. It's classic, but so dated. Are you going to sit there and tell me that the monsters is due on Maple Street has no sociological importance in today's society? It's a time capsule. It shows a 50s neighborhood losing its mind when little things start to go wrong, where all the neighbors are in each other's business and ready to turn at the slightest mistrust. That's why the 50s ended, and we moved on. You ever been outside in a group? I've watched several. Then how can you not realize that this situation still happens today? Monsters represents the presence and suspicion that we have of other people, regardless of how we talk to them. Take away our phones, internets, cars, powers, we'd be in our own little slice of panic at the disco. That's extrapolating a bit far, isn't it? But, guess what you do? I've been thinking about that. Maybe I've stretched it a bit too far at times, and considering going back to basics. How basic we talking here? Nothing primitive, just a refocus from the broad to more of a narrow category so we don't talk down to the audience like that abysmal, obsolete man did. You take that back! Mickey was a genius! Oh, come on! This combination Fahrenheit 451 and 1984 was ludicrous. The Chancellor was straight out of the Lackey with Power playbook, and Burgess Meredith sang one note the whole time. No man is obsolete. The problem is, he was wrong. Wrong? How can the librarian be wrong, yo? They read all the time! His ideas were not obsolete, but he gave his soapbox over to religious doctrine. There are so many other books he could have Dude, read. Dude, remember the time that was made in? It's like relevant context, yo. We were still at the Cold War with the USSR, a state that outlaws religion, yo. The writers weren't just saying God was right, nah, 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 nah. They used that specific detail to prove that the Soviets was wrong and limiting the people's beliefs. And history majors would love that point, which only proves it's dated. My point stands. Not even going to discuss it? What's to discuss? My review speaks for itself. Now, if you excuse me, I need to go write my Dogville review. Dogville? Jumping goat flakes! What's gotten into you? Oh, it's the most intense sociology ever. You see, there's this girl that goes to this mountain. No, 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 no! You ain't explaining that plot to no one! Oh, 
Apparently, I will be. Thank you for your feedback. Something fishy going on here. I'm gonna have to invest in the gate. Get him! Nah, nah, if I have two cultists, that's just too much crazy in the party. Again! What? You know there's anything weird about this? Ocean? Always be more specific. Well, he acted all funny, yo! I mean, first you do the Gilbert great, then you do the Green for the Dream. Not every movie is Sunshine and Hobbit Shires. I know, I know, I know, I know. But he planned to do Dogville next! Sweet Goat Flakes, why? I don't know, he's just been all committing to the doomy and the gloomy. Hmm, deja vu. How you figure? Well, he did do this once before. He was doing a whole bunch of really dark movies and then just sort of walked off set one day. Oh yeah, I remember that, yo, you had like the kitty is on. It was like, I can cat. Whatever happened to those anyways? Nothing. It was a fever dream. What? Anyway, he eventually snapped out of it and we just continued on as normal. Damn, I don't know what's gonna happen this time. I mean, think about it. He's talking about doing a movie that's all like, we gonna torture and victimize this pretty young girl for an hour and a half. Huh. Actually, according to this text he just got me, he's comparing and contrasting it to the girl next door. And he specifically says, not the comedy one. Day is something wrong. Now he's experimenting. Leave him alone. Well, I know he's experimenting, but why did he do the hitchhiking episode? Mm, well, I actually kind of see why he did that one. Well... Objectively, about a girl being stalked by a strange man on the road, this episode makes the audience feel that weird tension of traveling alone and having no one but yourself and your thoughts for company. It captures the loneliness and maddening thoughts we all experience. That was spot on! Why didn't the social talk about that? He just had me talk about the hitchhiker and what he represented. Which was a huge spoiler, yo! If you haven't seen The Twilight Zone by now, it's kind of assumed spoiled. Well, I, I got a disappointment we was past all that. Yeah, come to think of it. He did also have me spell the Midnight Sun. Called it the M. Night Shyamalan inspiration. Right. He did that the third time he called you, which is really odd because normally he don't do that. Except in Gilbert Gray. That's right, he, he. Ooh. What? Oh, it's so clear. Don't you see? He's not Soch. He's old Soch. Uh, well, I mean, he did just reach his 30. Nah, man. He the original Socio. Don't you remember? Back when he first started, yo, yeah, he, you remember, he talked to you at a time. He had a really long lance, the exposition time, and he sported that mustache. Hey. I made him shave that years ago! Can't you see what's happening, yo? That cunning bastard. He's trying to sneak in facial hair and think I wouldn't notice. Damn, it's not just the facial hair that's changed, yo. It's the old Soch. What? He's a different Soch, yo. The one from before. I don't know what he did with the real one, but I got to find him before he ruins this show with the Dogville Review. And I'm officially done with this conversation. I got a party to work on. If we don't get him back soon, there's a chance we never gonna get him back, yo. He's stuck in a place between spaces. A place between light and dark. He's stuck in... Finish that line, and I'll kill your character. I was gonna say purgatory, yo. You know, you know the place between dimensions? Otherwise, I would've seen him. That's really good, Kelvin, and I'm very proud of you, and I wish you the best. Anyway, I'm busy trying to figure out how this is gonna work when half the party worships Haster. You do that. I wanna try to stay social force too late. Kelvin, we have had many conversations about the multiverse, and I agree with a lot of them. But this one just doesn't fit. Soch is Soch. Always has been. Well, not always. Sometimes, when you least expect it, you look into the mirror and find that you don't always recognize the person on the other side. Sense. It was how I was moving forward. Anyway, I got some favor to ask. What is it? I was going to purgatory. Do you need gas money? No, 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 no. It's not that kind of trip. See, it's a place outside of time and dimensions where things forgotten go to wander until they is forgotten themselves. There's no time, no locations, just emptiness. So, so what can I do to help? I need you to watch Fight Club. All right. Remember, switch to your favorite scene in five minutes. Always do. It's good. Yeah, he's a good boy.
So it's really good. Yeah, no, no, no. Come in. An associate. Is you there? Oh, there you is. Sous! Huh? Huh? How did... I come to get you, Sous? How did you fucking me? Do you really want me to show the work after all this time? God, no. Let's get out of here. All right, it is. Good. Go, wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't we... Shouldn't we take care of him, too? Oh, no, no, don't worry about him. He's just lost in his happiness. He's fine. What? Why? Oh, well, last session he got a house full of his own stuff. Huh? He, yeah, he's, uh, through, uh, Oblivion, he, uh, found a uh, zen happiness. It, it's don't worry about it. Okay, uh, how do we get out of purgatory? We wait for the kid. The what? Come on, social. Thanks. No, I, why? Do you want to get out of here or not? How did you do that? Oh, uh, Bacchus is my psychic anchor. It's, it's, it's real handy. Makes as much sense as anything else that happened today. Where's the other guy? Oh, uh, apparently he, uh, he working on a, a dog wheel review. Sweet, go flake says what? Yeah, yeah, he says he wants to compare and contrast it to the bad, the girl next door. Uh, I, don't, I don't see really how. Do you see how it shows? Sosh? You what? Actually, I'm a who. Why would you review that? Oh, they are both exemplary of societal attitudes towards women. And while we're at it, you completely missed the point of the Twilight Zone. God, another critic. What did I do wrong? You depersonalized it. Everyone has their own reasons for watching the Twilight Zone. Nostalgia, observations, life lessons learned from this strangely poignant program. It is a cultural phenomenon. It was. Like The Walking Dead is today. They're not even in the same ballpark. New series try so hard to demand absolute attention and retention from their viewers that anyone outside of a fan is lost. Even formula shows like NCIS have plots that require years of watching to get many of the subtleties the series tries to put across. In contrast, half a century after it was made, people can pick up any episode of The Twilight Zone and understand exactly what the whole series is about. Weird experiences or thoughts that shape our everyday lives. So you're saying we all live a Twilight Zone episode at some point? No, what I'm saying is the ideas that are shared by this program still ring as true to many people. Sure, some episodes are only there for the plot twist, but many point their observational lenses at the behaviors of individuals in unusual circumstances, and on a micro level it examines how realistic characters can react to them. It's relatable, even the Buster Keaton episode. Actually, that one was absolute gold. The subjective shape why people remember it? While sloppy, the subjective shapes everything in entertainment. That's why my show aims for that more middle ground now, between analytical and experience. People want both sides. Sorry, but the data disagrees. In what way? How long have we been doing this? Um, three and a half years? And in that time, which has garnered more views? Your let's compromise and go both roads, or the classic era which throws the analysis into the forefront while opinion is on the wayside? There's no rebuttal for good statistical data. It's true. I wouldn't be where I am without you. Because you were me. Thank you. Now, if you excuse me, but you went away for a reason. And what would that be? Change is good. The best shows keep you guessing, establishing what they do, and then tweaking it over time to make it better than it was. Sure, missteps can happen, but without this change, the audience would leave. You went away because I had to change, to try and keep it fresh while staying true to why I started this. Refresh me. Why did you start doing this? Because I wanted to make people think and smile at the same time. Maybe laugh. Why would you want to stop improving that? You had your time, and now it's... gone. There's no clear sign along our path that defines the exact moment we become someone else. Sometimes it's a sloping curve, almost unnoticeable. Others have a hairpin turn, making a conscious choice to put their past selves on the shelf. Not everyone can make that choice. Some are happier never making it. The only clear path is the one that takes everyone down this particular trail that skirts the edge of the Twilight Zone.